She's an award-winning YouTuber and best-selling author obsessed with helping you go after the life you want. I like it. Join her as she seeks out the stories and strategies. Give me every little detail. Of extraordinary people who found success. I'm going to get emotional. Oh, my God. Welcome to Detail Therapy with Amy Landino. You just know when you go to someone's house and it's just like warm and fuzzy and you're like, I like being here. When you go to a restaurant, you're like, I like being here. And when you walk into an office and you're like, I like being here, how the person at the front desk greets you. From that perspective, you got to think about how these people, every single person, it's their one meeting with Gary or their one interaction. And how do you really take care of that? Hey there, welcome back to Detail Therapy. You just heard a little snippet of my chat with Tyler Schmidt, lead assistant to VaynerMedia's CEO, Gary Vaynerchuk. And yes, I know I talk a lot about him on this show. I'm sorry, he's my digital mentor. I think he's doing great things. And so hopefully all of this information is super valuable to you. In this episode, you will hear Tyler talk about a few really interesting things, including what it's like to schedule the life of a media CEO who works nearly 70 hours hour weeks, maybe more, with very rare breaks. Factoring in Tyler's hospitality experience when dealing with appointments, people, and clients, and what it's like to change your whole life with your friends and family and their expectations of seeing you and hanging out with you when you drop everything to pursue a dream job. Host, I'm a YouTube creator, professional speaker, best-selling author, and entrepreneur. I am here to help you go after the life you want. You can find out more details about me at youtube.com slash amytv. Just before we get started, I'm just going to be the nagging wife again. Hello. I'm here to nag you, dear. And um, and that's because I need to know more details about you. We're all about the details around here. I'd love to hear more about you. So I'm not going to go on for too long. But if you could pop over to amylandino.com slash detail therapy survey, it is also linked in the show notes Could because you know we have a lot of details in the show notes. I'm going to put this in the show notes. It's a very quick survey, about two minutes. Just tells me more about you so I can make sure this show is made for you. So if you could please Please do that. I know how busy you are. I do. I know you're multitasking right now. I know you're driving in the car. Oh, oh, you're on the treadmill. Okay, you're trying to stay focused on the show. I believe that. Put it on your calendar, block out a half an hour, and it's only going to take two minutes. And then you're going to have an extra 28 minutes in your life because of me. (laughs) And I get my survey. So that works out awesome. So if you could please do that, I appreciate it so, so much. Big shout out to our reviewer of the day, and that is Lillian FSD. Thank you so much for your five stars in the iTunes store, as well as your review of the podcast. She said, it's one of the podcasts I consistently listen to every week, no matter what. The guests all come from various backgrounds and help get an overall feel of how people find success in different paths of life. Thank you, Amy. It's a pleasure hearing from you and your perspectives as well. Keep it up. Girl, I will. I will do that just for you and for anyone else who happens to hear this right now. Thank you so much for making the time to leave that review. If you would like a potential shout out on this show, just pop into your favorite podcast player and let me know what you think. However many stars you think is appropriate, it's up to you. I want your true and honest feedback. Remember, everything we talk about today is going to be in our show notes, detailspodcast.com. So if you hear anything that Tyler talks about, maybe a book he recommends or a tactic, we will make sure it is in the notes so you can take a read, click a link, whatever the thing is that you need to do. So with that, let's dive in. This is my chat with my next guest. Today, I'm sitting down with Tyler Schmidt. Working at VaynerMedia for the last five years, if you ask Tyler what his title is, he will tell you he doesn't have one, but I will tell you that he manages the world of Gary Vaynerchuk. If you're in the business world and you have been hiding under a rock, Gary runs the full-service digital agency VaynerMedia, as well as other ventures under the VaynerX brand, such as Vayner Speakers and Pure Wow. Ladies, I know you're hooked on Pure Wow, just like me, if you're not following them on Twitter. Amazing. So that's what Gary does. But in order for him to stay on top of all the things that the world has come to expect of him, Tyler has to make sure that machine stays oiled and running. And Gary needs to know where he is and how he needs to be at any given moment of the day. 
So that's what we're going to talk about. Tyler and I sat down in the office of VaynerMedia in New York City when someone else took over for him for this brief 40 minutes that I stole from Gary Vaynerchuk. So let's take a listen at how he defines doing great work in going after the life you want. Tyler Schmidt in the house. What's up? Hello, hello, hello. All is good. It's great to have you. I'm so excited right now. Tell me, why do you manage Gary Vaynerchuk's life? Why from a personal? Uh, so it's funny. I've, yeah, I've you're come why. To, yeah, I've come to realize it is uh, a hospitality and services thing. Mm. Yeah, I grew up. My dad, it really stems and I've been thinking about it a lot. My dad was one of nine people, one, one of nine kids mm-hmm. uh, in his family. So it was constant chaos and family and um, growing up was always around family and it was always about love and like some people just drop into your home in the span of two seconds and all of a sudden you got to have tea ready for them and cookies and some food and all that. Da, da, da. So I grew up in that whole world. My mom was always home when I was growing up, never had a nanny or anything like that. So on the drop of a dime, she was always there, ready to help and serve and and put, you know, the needs of others before her. And then I started working in restaurants. I loved it. Um, And I went then to Penn State. I was gonna go for a business degree. I didn't do too well my freshman year. (laughs) And I ended up in the hospitality school and loved it. Yeah. Loved it was a, it's just applied business, but like I loved the services sure. aspect. Um, graduated, opened a restaurant for a guy in Morristown, New Jersey, and I loved the operational side of things. But then uh, when it came to the day to day of running the restaurant, I was like, I don't want to do this. I just want to do their Instagram marketing. Mm. So I was also a big tech kid. I loved Apple. I was like a huge. When Apple was this? Fan At boy. what point was this? This was when I was twenty one. Okay. So just graduated. Um, and I guess 22 maybe. And I had just got a hospitality degree, had a job and quit like five months into working with this guy. And they got me connected with, uh, Mickey cloud who runs our Chattanooga office. Started working here for about six months on client services, account management, just here stuff. at VaynerMedia, yep, here at VaynerMedia mm-hmm. entry level. I didn't know Gary. I didn't mm-hmm. know AJ. I didn't know the story. Mm-hmm. I just loved tech and social i loved twitter i loved following like the new age stuff and uh and then i walked into like a meeting one day and i think it was a review and they looked at me and they were like hey would you have any interest in being aj's assistant and i was like yes like a million percent yes. what was aj doing at the time aj's AJ, gary's a, yeah, brother brother yeah. younger brother at the time he was the coo so okay. he ran kind of the operations yeah. of the business um and something inside me was just like, I would love to do that. And I didn't know why. And I've really realized over the last like 18 months and what I think I'll end up like talking a lot about from a assistant perspective is like, it's the hospitality, it's the services. Yeah. It's kind of putting others before yourself and allowing your work to let them be them best selves. Best yeah. Selves. So what are those, what are those common features then? How has the hospitality world, that's really cool that you were doing that before college and that seemed yep. to resonate with you so much that when you needed a redirect in yeah. your education, you were like, you know what? Yeah. I already know what I like. And, and exactly. And, and I've only like, I'll say I've only come to actually, I think quant- like realize and like kind of quantify that's what it is it's just always what i've defaulted into of like where i'm the most comfortable Mm -hmm. and like having the most fun and enjoying things is like (sighs) hospitality like you just know when you go to someone's house and it's just like warm and fuzzy and you're like i like being here when you go to a restaurant you're like i like being here and when you walk into an office and you're like i like being here how the person at the front desk greets you like i love that stuff uh, and I've really come to realize that's what it is that I love because you can't really define a lot of that. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of what we do in Gary's world, a lot of his stuff is like quantifiable, obviously his like charisma. Um, but with the amount of people that we deal with, Alex on my team, who's amazing, has been with us, I think a little over a year now, um, you're just dealing with a million people. Right. You know, and so from that perspective, you got to think about how these people, every single person, it's their one meeting with Gary or their one interaction. And how do you really yeah. take care of that? That must be a lot, right? Yeah. Okay. So before I get to that, yep. how'd you get from AJ to Gary? Like what was so, the... So, you know, a big thing in like the 
kind of assistant being Gary's assistant world, Nate and John, who you spoke to earlier, mm-hmm. now uh, run Empathy Wines. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matt DeMeo before, who runs client services now for Vayner Sports. It was almost, they always had it as this like training ground. Get to know them, get context mm-hmm. on their lives, Ari, Gary and AJ. And then you would spit out into kind of a role where you're going to punch above your weight. Um, and I had been AJ's assistant for 18 months. I'm like, what's next? I was really deep in conversations with Eric Fulweiler about going to uh, open the London office with him, mm-hmm. being kind of on that first team. And on like a random Thursday night, we were late at the office. I was like very much like in deep conversations with AJ about what my next role was going to be. I had known he was leaving. And it was like 8 o'clock, and Gary's like, come here real quick. And I didn't have a, a – deep relationship with him at the Mm -hmm. time. I knew him by just working with AJ. And uh, he pulled me into his office and asked me if I wanted to be his assistant. And I was like, yes, blindly. (laughs) But he was like, go to sleep on it, go to bed for a second. Um, I had to (laughs) like really, really like calibrate of like doing this for another. And he was like three years minimum. So I'm like, okay, that's a a lot. But I just knew the opportunity was going to be amazing. And as I've at, like I would never felt better than today about doing that decision. what I do. That's awesome. Yeah, and the actual role versus the other way mm-hmm. of like at first it was like okay the first day it's like three years and then the day's gonna come and like I'm not gonna do that anymore and uh, you know now I'm, we're like talking you know what is it just evolve into naturally more because but there's so much context there's so many little things. Um, and Alex is on the team now and, like, building out this little almost team of his world of relationships and yeah. logistics. And obviously our whole team has, like, gone through this massive transformation. Um, but that's that was that. He just asked me, and I, I was like, yeah. And he was like, go sleep on it. And then <laughs> the next morning I was like, yeah. And he was like three years, which was he had done it, like, 18 months, two years in the past. And it's, like, three years now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's just take one or three steps back. For anyone yep. who doesn't know who Gary Vaynerchuk is, other than the fact that you assist a CEO of a, yep. a huge company, mm-hmm. which is a great big deal, right? Yeah. Like yeah. everything you just said would qualify as like, wow, that's amazing. Yep. You know, that you've moved up, right? Uh-huh. Not just that. I mean, I think the reason why I wanted to sit down with you was because of how much Gary respects and lives by the number of minutes in the day, yeah. which is what I think makes your role yep. so interesting. Yeah. So to just break this down, I think if you could say, if you could summarize what Gary's hours are per yeah. week, mm-hmm. what do they look like? So I would say 8 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. Monday through Thursday, and then Friday he ends at 5.30 to be with the family. Because he's trying this because, new thing where he yeah, hangs out yeah, with his family yeah, on Friday yeah, nights. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. He's with the wife and kids Friday nights. Um, and we're always like elbowing him out the door. Yeah, that's um, good. But every day. Yeah. Some days on like random days, I'll just like go back through the calendar of like three years and just like, you know, so 150 weeks of days of just like meetings. Yeah. And then when you're talking about eight, you know, 8 a.m. to 10, it's not. And why Alex like saved my life and and all this is it's not like two hour meeting, like operations meeting and then like one hour lunch. Like it's like. 10 five minute meetings, a couple right. 15 minute meetings, a couple podcast interviews, a lot of one on ones with employees, one hour meeting here, travel. When we first started, he didn't have a driver. He has a driver now. So we used to have to order his Uber every time. We, they'd cancel because he'd always be running late. But it's like, you know, we'll have 45 meetings in a day. Yeah. And yeah. then you think about the work. It takes 10 minutes to schedule a five minute meeting. Right. And then when he's running 10 minutes late and you have to contact those people and adjust them, but still get them in because they're leaving to go on a two week honeymoon and they need to meet with him before the honeymoon. And that that, so a lot of moving parts. Yeah. So talk about, uh, first of all, I want to know how you're here talking to me right now because it seems as though you're a very important yeah. person in his life yeah. making sure that he's moving yeah. and shaking. Uh, Alex is holding down. The okay, so then Alex talk about that. So you yeah. have, um, let me ask you this, three years ago when you yeah. started, was there a two-person team for Managing Gary or has that so transformed? we first, att- so when we did it, he was like, okay, but I think I want to do it as two people. 
uh, so myself and as India, you were talking about the role that's exactly that you were right. taking. Okay. Yeah, we were like inbound, outbound because that was he was just starting to like get his brand was getting bigger, mm-hmm. and we were like, okay, do we separate it as Gary V stuff and then Gary Vaynerchuk, the businessman? Do we is it inbound and then outbound? Is it calendar like management and scheduling? So we did two people, myself and India, who works on yep. Vayner Talent. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was uh, we worked side by side for a little while. She she moved over. She's way too creative to yeah, deal with it. Like yeah. way too cool. Um, she always and, came off that way. Not too yeah, cool, no. but like India has a lot of other things going on in that uh, head of hers. Uh, I could just tell. She, like in always. all those Ask Gary yeah. Vee's where she's just oh, reading yeah. questions from Twitter. Yep. She's always got <laughs> thoughts, and they're amazing. She's like gonna take over the world. That's she's awesome. super cool. And uh, so then she left for a little bit. Uh, I had a, a kid named Sean come and work on the team for a little bit uh kid named garrett green so yes but it's been a process it's a really tough how would you do you guys do you feel like you're just straight up tag teaming or do you feel like you're mostly in charge of scheduling and he's helping so right now alex really and we've like started to get into a good groove and where we're at right now is major clients major relationships making sure gary's seeing the people that he needs to see at a high level, I manage all that. Ongoing partnerships and relationships and endorsements, K-Swiss, et cetera, I help lead all those projects, make sure he's in the room that he needs to be in, and we're checking all the boxes, doing all that stuff. If Louie needs five minutes with Gary, that's Alex. She schedules. She, like, really, like, is now doing his schedule. Like, mm-hmm. okay, 20 minutes about this team's structure you know she's making sure that stuff um but uh, you know the way it works a lot of times is you know we book a full day of internal stuff and then a client needs to see at a certain time you'll you'll book over but then there's work to reschedule all that so she deals with all that i'm like high level you know this person so managing you know building relationships with everyone's assistant as well so it's quick easy you know that stuff matters is like too um you know if we had never didn't have any sort of relationship or like, no, we're not doing the podcast. You know, like right, all that, that right, stuff is right, real. Right. And so thinking about a lot of that mm-hmm. is how I'm doing it. And then she's kind of handling his day to day and helping manage there. And um, and then also it's almost a full time job when he's in the office for a full day of getting him from meeting to meeting, making sure people that come here and then he's running 45 minutes behind are feeling taken care of and it's not like oh you don't matter yeah I, that was something you were talking about earlier and i think that's really important to point out is we're not just talking about anyone taking meetings and i know everyone has a special probably meaning to somebody who's having yeah. a meeting with them yep. but gary has built relationships with people all over the world through yeah. his content mm-hmm. so even when we were here a few weeks ago with my little brother and you know knowing that we were grateful to get a 15 minute yeah. meeting not a five minute meeting and it was this like big thing and for us to come in and we flew in like a lot of people are doing that with gary where 100%. it's like this big pivotal moment where they either get to meet him or check in on something super meaningful so your hospitality stuff must come in it's really handy totally, at that you point know, and, and 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 like you can't take it lightly because that it, like yeah, like you're saying, you know, a team flew in this morning uh, to do a podcast with him for 20 minutes, and they flew in from Toronto. They're here for two days. You know, it's like a, it's a really big deal to them. You meet them, like this is everything. They yeah, spend it's the money pillar on the tickets, around people's the tickets whole thing. into New York, and, and then a client needs to see them. Yeah, and they're here in town, and they flew here. And how do you make that work? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, okay, I email them. Oh, like, could you? Do you want to change your flights? Oh no, we're already on the plane. Okay. Cool. So we're not going to do this. Mm-hmm. You know, there's just like a lot yeah. to it, and yeah. it's at scale massively. Yeah. So our team helps tremendously. Always, you know, we've built out girl Sophie, who like is helping a lot with the hospitality. You know, people come in, giving office tours, um, helping like spend time one on one. But it's a lot. And, yeah. and then from Gary's perspective, is like the way I'm tr- always thinking about things for him is I need him to be working at the most efficient possible, and that's him being able to be at his full maximum when he does get in the room with them. Right. He, Whatever that full maximum is for that particular exactly thing, right. you yep. know, he so, has to be in that so that's zone. Making sure he has the full context on the mm-hmm. meeting. That's Gosh. making sure that they're, you know, on, a lot of times people are like, I'm flying out there to have a 10 minute meeting. What should I talk to him about? 
you know, like, and oh, wow. do, I do you just have blow to field a lot of that? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, a lot of do that. You have some people, some I, I people want to have an hour. I don't want to ask any of your secrets. Some people like, want to have a two hour conversation. Yeah. Some people don't care at all. Yeah. Do people say like, you know, you're, you're saying here's what standard is when they come back to you, but they're yeah. like, oh, a lot of times it's like, do what you want to, you know, yeah. just like, don't, he wants it all, you yeah. know, yeah. but it depends. Yeah. You know, and, and each relationship, the way I think about it matters. Yeah, absolutely. Because they're going to go home and talk about the experience. Oh yeah. You know, cause and, he taught uh, them how. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. That's exactly right. And, okay. I want to, yeah. I want to talk about, um, seasons of scheduling yeah because i think uh it's interesting when people don't quite understand that time is such of the essence and just like we were saying there's like a vibe Mm -hmm. there's a zone somebody needs to be in if um if i'm one of gary's 15 minute meetings and there might be what a slew of of people who just want to meet gary that probably happen all in a row right and then it's a little bit easier for him to be in that zone Mm -hmm. but even on a on a macro Mm -hmm. You know, there's probably a period of time where he's much more promotional on a day-to-day totally. basis versus, uh, no, we need to we need to build the business. Can yep. you talk about what? How do you guys determine what that looks like? You yep. know, maybe the next three months is super business building, and but you mm-hmm. know, a book can come out, yep. and then that's when it's time to be on, and the brand is like full force. Totally. And I think uh, you know, I always love having the conversation of like, he's just as human as everyone else, mm. and like, he is. In the more passionate than I've seen the 99% of people, he's more determined, he's more focused, he doesn't hit snooze like that, but he gets in moods and sure. he wants to talk to people for two hours and then he doesn't and he's tired and he gets fired up about this new model that we have for Vayner and is like, only thing I want to focus on is selling that. Or he's got a big new sneaker coming out and we need to do press for it. Like that that happens and he goes through those motions and everything. But we always go back to like business is number one. It's very easy for him to be Gary V mm-hmm. and to go around and do podcasts. He can make a full living of that. We sometimes get caught in like, let's, you know, easy, 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 easy. Right. It's much harder to actually do the work. And uh, we're always gut checking ourselves on that. Always kind of trying to keep things priority. We're speaking every day, all day, you know, like hard, like if I move this person here, when can I do that? You know, blah, 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 blah. Um, but from a seasonality perspective, yeah, like January, CES. So right now mm-hmm. it's like, cool. I Right when I finish this, we have to send out 600 invites to our event at CES. Mm-hmm. Who's going to be there? Who do we know is going to be there but can't get together, but maybe he can text them on the fly. So how do I make sure he has that information? CES. January, you know, like can, uh, we have agent 2021 down in Miami. So if random people hit him up, a couple fans, send him an email. Hey, you coming down to Miami? Yeah. Check out agent 20. Like, mm-hmm. so I'm thinking generally about the whole year, you know, summer, he does the last two weeks with his family. So that's no good. Um, as his brand gets bigger, A and A, you know, is in ad week, Tokyo, Singapore, we're opening up Singapore office. So like, Mm -hmm. yeah, macro, it's like a lot of that. And then it's just like day to day, wake up, rapid fire, go to sleep. I feel like he's not here right now. No, he's not. Okay, because like, I feel like there's like a flight. vibe that's yeah. not here. Okay, uh-huh. no, so he's, he's not the in the building. How do you make sure he's sticking with the? Ca- I mean, I'm sure yeah. he's trained at yeah. this point, yeah. and he, yeah. he cares yeah. as much See, about it. See, that's the thing is, he is better than me at yeah. making sure he's doing what he needs to do. And I'll, I'll so say he's, that. So he's getting what probably notifications from like calendar appointments, just saying you need to get out, yeah. you need to yeah. go. You he need- checks his calendar more than any I other do. app probably yep. right yeah and so he's always gut checking me and like you know he just the littlest details that's what's always funny about like even the role and like with alex it takes a long time to like you know for the 40 meetings he might have tomorrow if one of them is like weird or off or overlapping he'll know it and he'll call it out and be like what's going on here? yeah you know, wow. so for as much as he doesn't think about it because he gives us full autonomy to be like, this is where you need to be. He's like, he can tell when there's something not hundred percent. Right. Yeah. And, and he is, and he calls it right out mm. because there are like, you know, if I have someone uh, again, details, right. Little thing. If I have him on a call with someone from 12 to 12, 15, and then another person is 12, 10 to 12, 20, like he's in a bind yeah. and he'll be like, not thrilled about that situation because sure, sure. It's, again, not putting him in the best position right. to be like, 
now he's got to deal with it. That's that's what. Yep. My, that's what that should be. You should be the bad guy. That's exactly yeah. right. Mm-hmm. And if there's a hundred meetings and that happens one time, the the hundred don't matter. It's that. Yeah. And he he's on it. Sunday after the Jets, we typically really like get into it for the week. Yeah. He's like, okay, now yeah. that the now that I know how that yeah, panned yeah, out with exactly the Jets, right. now we can talk yep. about it. Yep. Okay. So there's there's actual meetings. I feel like a, a really big tell on how somebody values time is not just when there are things on the calendar, but when there aren't and yep. white space. And I'm pretty sure white space doesn't really exist in yep. your world, yep. but. In the situation, humans, yeah. humans are humans are humans. A flight didn't make yeah. it. Something something yeah. ends up being blank. Mm-hmm. How do you guys prepare for those moments? Does he have? Um, you were talking about texting earlier. Like yep. even even him just reaching out to people, I feel like would be as meaningful as a meeting. And, 100%. and you so could have to do like more a, of that. Yeah, we're trying to carve out more of his time for that. Mm-hmm. An hour, what does that look an like? An hour like just to texting? do sales. Okay. Well, I'll just block an hour that's sales Mm -hmm. for him to sit in a room all alone with nobody and his thoughts and his phone he can do a lot of damage with that thing and like hit people up Mm -hmm. do your thing Mm -hmm. you know and go through igdm who knows who's hitting you up like allowing him that forcing that yeah um matters in a world where we could never have a second of open time like we could just never do it. Right. And then if someone cancels, you know, this we, we talked about this a lot in the past, but yeah, we've got a running list. If tomorrow he's if his flight was canceled right now, I think he's in the air. It's three forty three. Real time check. Where yeah, in the world a, is Gary Vaynerchuk? <laughs> um if if his flight got canceled and he was coming back into New York, he'd probably be back at the office by like six o'clock right now. Mm-hmm. We'd schedule three dinners for him to go till 10 o'clock and have all of tomorrow booked for New York meetings. Wow. Clients, internal meetings, podcast, some, you know, not celebrity, but like friend that is looking for advice or wants to talk about their podcast or something like that. Mm-hmm. Like, I we've got it all on a list. Yeah. Things, you guys just have a running list. Just a like beautiful thing. There yep. you go. <laughs> there That's you exactly go. right. And then Marcus who is his chief of staff at Vayner and like really like is his right hand in Vayner operations and like, you know, acts as him in a lot of meetings in that sense. Yeah. He's got 45 things to attack Mm -hmm. right now, Mm -hmm. you know, so we can, we can get that going all. Yeah. Nonstop. Yeah. Yeah. Fascinating. Okay. So, um, work-life balance. Everybody wants to know Gary is, so at at the at the end of this conversation all the time because it's very mm-hmm. easy to judge him. Yeah. Like your really Friday night is how you add yeah. more time t- yeah. for your family, and uh-huh. that's very easy to just judge somebody. And he's made executive decisions yeah. about his life, and he knows how he operates at at 100%. the highest. But this has to be coming up more and more as the kids yeah. get older. Yeah. How do you does he have to bounce out sometimes during the totally. week? Like yeah, how, yeah. What does he that does look a like? lot of he does a lot of. Um, and like I work with, you know, the family a lot in that sense, but he goes to a ton of morning assemblies. Like Mm -hmm. everyone at school knows him and interacts with him and he's in the halls of his school. Like he's doing that, the work-life balance thing. And that's like something I really went through personally. And I still get asked a lot, but like was really hard at first. Like I had a tough time the first year of doing it because there's people get confused between like he talks a lot about map to your ambitions people get confused i said yes to taking the job with him then he said okay cool you're my assistant this is what i need you to do i wanted to do the job but i wanted the job on my terms but he's like well this is the opportunity and this is what i need you to do so i had to fight that a lot of like but i watch football on sundays with my boys i don't work right (laughs) but i go out for drinks go out for drinks yeah but I'm hungover on Saturday mornings <laughs> when he's texting me at 7:45 after we just worked 70 hour weeks. Wow. But like, cool. He has no problem with just being like, you don't have to do it. Yeah. So like, that's where I think the work life balance. And for me, I'm like, I think of it now as work plus life equals balance. And like on your own terms, it's just all one thing. I don't think it's that much different. Mm-hmm. The second I like rip that bandaid off of like my work is my life. And if I need balance in one area, like 
do that. What do you think you had to discover about everything that made that okay to you? Because was it just, oh, I guess this is how people are, or it was, oh, actually, I really love my job, and it's okay if I'm here a lot. Like, what did that actually feel like to you when you ripped the Band-Aid off? Was that everyone else puts your work-life balance on you. It's not yeah. you. Yeah. Everyone else wants you to live map to a certain way. Mm. And then you, that's like society in general. I think like yeah. societal norms and why he's so powerful is like we live in a, you live, you grow up in a world where until you're a certain age, you're judged by other people and that's your success. Are you good in school? I don't know. Your teachers give you your grades. Mm -hmm. Are you a good kid? I don't know, your parents discipline you and tell you how you should act. But at, at some point, then it like reverses. And when does that stop? So the people, your parents, your teachers, your friends, parents, everyone else that looks at you, and they're the ones that impose whether you're a good person or a bad person or a successful kid or not successful kid. Then at some point, it doesn't matter anymore, but people don't like change. So they don't want that to not exist anymore. So you're still at 35, like w hoping your mom is okay with your girlfriend, but like <laughs> you should be okay with your girlfriend and yeah. your mom should be okay with your girlfriend if you are, mm -hmm. or you have to say that's not going to work. Like, and that's what I think happens with a lot of work-life balance conversation is like, I, even with my own parents and my mom and whatever is like, it has taken a lot getting used to because it's just not, not that it's not normal, but again, back to the societal, societal norms, like mess up a lot of things. Yeah. Because there's these preconceived notions of what it should be just because what it should be. Th look at cigarettes and marijuana. Mm. Like 20 years ago, it was okay to smoke cigarettes and you were the devil if you smoke marijuana. <laughs> now you're not far off from being able to go into CVS and buy a THC tablet as medicine and they don't serve, sell cigarettes. That's society. Mm. That's just like norms. Mm -hmm. Same with drinking. Like going to a bar and getting blacked out is okay. But sitting on your couch and getting stoned is like not. And like that's just I th like a very telltale thing to me of – you do you a lot of times society wants to map your actions to how they want you to be and put you in a box and keep you there because it's safe and secure but it's like work-life balance if you want to be what you want to be a lot of times it's going to take breaking out of what people want you to because no one wants you to be what you want to be which is what was the personal thing that you had to deal with that made it harder for you to even rip the band-aid off for yourself after in that first year was it your buddies like dude come yeah, over and buddies, watch football habits, like, what? buddies and habits yeah because like nothing made me happier than if i was like on my shit with work and like doing it da, mm -hmm. da, 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 da. but then when you step out of it and you're like doing like habitual stuff like habits are so hard to change so what and habits trick you into th making you think you're happy a lot of times like they're mm. really powerful and so like a lot of times it's fantasy football sunday watching football with my boys from one to eight o'clock you're like can't wait for it all week and then it's happening but you're like why is this not that fun because it's a habit you like get the high mm. before you even like do it and then you do that and then you go into work monday and you're not prepared and then you feel really but if you did the work all Sunday and you're like really happy and fired up going into Monday, it's like, whoa. Mm. But like, that's a really strong habit to break. Yeah. You got to one, tell your friends like, and then they're like, da -da -da -da, ripping on you. And then they but think just, you're judging them or and something. And then they think you're yeah. judging them. Mm -hmm. And then you're happy that you're not hanging out with them. That's really hard for them to be like, wait, you're happy you're not hanging out with us. But if you're like really a true friend, you're like, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's this book called The Power of Habit by I think Charles Duhigg, yes. which is like, a really good one that's it's a good like one. i read that i was like yeah yeah and so that's societal real. norms and that is like how i think about work-life balance yeah it's like this is my life my best andy k and d rock like i hang out with them all day like i know i what i love weird. walking in here and i've now walked in here twice in the last month which is really mm -hmm. odd mm -hmm. uh, but when i walk in here i'm like you guys just look like a brotherhood yeah. like welcoming me into the office and yeah. it's just it, so there's like a hospitality aspect of that there's a family thing for you yeah. and i just think uh, that's really amazing okay well I know Gary's schedule is completely determined by what's on that calendar, but what? how do you manage your life? Mm -hmm. What's happening in the morning before you, maybe you are encountering, encountering yeah. Gary, like yeah. first thing you check a text message, yep. but what, is, what does your morning look like? 
Do you have uh, a routine? Yeah, like, do. what do you do yeah. to stay a little bit centered in all this? Um, try not to take it seriously. Yeah. 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 And that's, that's good what advice. he taught me. Like, it's not that serious. <laughs> like, the whole kit and caboodle is not that serious. Yeah. Like, health is what matters. And, like, waking up. If you're waking up, you're good. Yeah. And if you can get True. to that spot, like... It's really not all that serious. If someone flew here from India tomorrow and Gary was in L.A. and I messed up the meeting and, like, I would be in a tough spot mentally and, like, I really let that dude down, but, like, life would go on. Yeah. And so if you – if I've and I've come to be able to live life through that lens, that can be, like, really powerful. So, like, that's number one. It's, like, it's really not all that serious. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it's my morning routine, wake up, I'm on my phone for 20 minutes in bed, text – email, Twitter, anything that's, like, crazy. What time are you up? I wake up uh, – typically, if I'm playing basketball, I'll wake up at 5.30. If I'm not playing basketball, like, 7.30. Because mm-hmm. if I'm not playing basketball, I'll be up to, like, 1.30. Okay. That's when I love to do work the so most. So as long as Gary's schedule is, like, yeah, mapped out, he's good, yeah. you don't necessarily have to be at the helm while he's no. at meetings. Okay. and that's where Alex has helped me a little bit more. Okay. Like, I was much more, like, when I was, uh, you know, running solo – it's so like if he's here at eight, I gotta be here at mm-hmm. eight. Now I can be like a, like eight twenty, eight thirty, and also our team wasn't twenty eight people like it is now, where mm-hmm. I've got five kids and I can be like, I need you to help me with this right now. <laughs> um, but uh, and then it's just like work. Like I have a hundred and this is my text messages since we sat down. How many text messages do you have since you sat down with me? How long has it been? One, two, three, 30 four, minutes. five, six, seven, eight. That's a lot nine, of text messages. 10, 11 new chains. Yeah, group text will get you too. Yeah, group text will definitely <laughs> get you. Um, but that's like, and also what he's taught me a lot is like, a lot of times it's just the work. Yeah. You know, and that's, you just got to do it. Yeah. And thinking about it, you can either get, it can be daunting or you can just attack it. Yeah. You know, Action. but I'm going to have to get out of here and choose which one of those 11 I should respond to first. <laughs> one of them is someone that's in the office that I'm hoping to see, but they have to leave and go check a f- catch a flight. My favorite thing about this is that you can work while I'm interviewing you because you're, you're, you're informing us of like what you're balancing right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, What's cool. your commute every day? Uh, I live down on Wall Street. So okay. I just take the subway. Like the Wall Street. Yeah. The Wall mm. Street, which is pretty cool. It was yeah. one of the reasons I moved there. <laughs> I was like, that's pretty lie. dope. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, the subway runs right into the basement of my building. I take it right to Penn Station here, and I walk 10 minutes. It takes me 30, 35 minutes to and from work every day. Okay. Um, if there's – if I'm running a little late or, like, I need the full 30 minutes to, like, catch up on something, I'll – Take a cab every mm-hmm. now and again, fifteen dollar mm-hmm. cab. It'd have to be a pretty like serious. Yeah, day for like that. It, yeah. Like you can't. Well, if there's in. like something I'm doing here at eight thirty or nine, and like I need to take thirty minutes to like mentally think about it, or mm-hmm. like because the subway that you I won't do be as focused. Sure. Um, but if I need to do like thirty minutes work, I'll do I'll do that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Cool. That's it. You cool. get a monthly breakfast with my sister. Monthly, like every third week, we get breakfast, me and my sister. Nice. We have one tomorrow morning. Very so cool. That. Yeah. That's good, getting yeah. your family time in. Yeah, yeah That's for great. sure. But you tend to be in the office pretty late, huh? I do, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. partially because there's a lot of things to do. There's a lot <laughs> of things to do. <laughs> and also because it's not that bad yeah, when you really work with some cool people. it's really not that bad to be. Like, his office at night, looking over New York City with the lights on, is a pretty yeah. good spot to hang out. Yeah. You know, yeah, we, yeah, we saw that. There's recently. typically a good bottle of wine laying around. Yeah, right. Open up. Like, you can it's not, find one. Yeah, you know, like it's not. Vin, I think I yeah. found who drank your grandfather's wine. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, and I will say, like, it's not, you know, not every environment's gonna be this way, but you can get there. Yeah. You know. Sure. You can get there. Sure. It's how I think about it. That's great. Yeah. Okay, super, super informative. I know we talked about Gary a lot, but Mm -hmm. I do think that there is a mastermind behind making something like a Gary machine work, and Mm -hmm. he knows it because he's clearly 
yeah. you know, picked out who yep. he wanted in yeah. a spot for th- three years minimum. Yep, yep, yep. Or if you don't want to do it, then get out of here. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. Yeah. Yep. But um, I definitely think people have more questions about refining and and making the most of time and mm-hmm. getting more efficient. I know you guys have done a lot to get him be to be more efficient, such as you need a driver, not yep. Uber cars. Yep. Yep. Um, so if anyone wanted to ask you any questions online, where, th- where can they follow you? Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. At Tyler. At Tyler. You yeah. love talking T-Y-L-E-R. about that. I knew that was coming. I was yep. like, let's let him brag about That's the Instagram. Where, uh, <laughs> yep. You can hit me up on DM or Twitter. Twitter is getting a lot. More. We just keep walking around saying Twitter's lit. Twitter's lit. Twitter's I feel lit. like that because is what is D-Rock said lit. last time I was here. He's like, Amy, Twitter's yeah. lit. I'm and like, okay. I, Twitter, I, I'll say Twitter is like, pro- I wouldn't be here without Twitter, I don't think. I think that's fair to, because for a lot of us of to like say. Because of tech. Like yeah. Twitter just got me into like, I, I was always a curious person, and I think if you're curious, Twitter is an amazing place. So is Instagram, more and more and more. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, Twitter, April, I've been on Twitter 10 years, which is oh, cool. Wow. Yeah. That is wild. You meet a ton of people on there. Yeah. You know, and it's great. News, and then just thinking about the way of the world. So Twitter is not as cool as Ty Schmidt 5. But Ty Schmidt 5. Yeah. We couldn't get we'll Tyler. We'll get there. Well, no, someday. someone's got this like, cool like, icon that's a horse. I keep trying to hit them up. But <laughs> are they tweeting? They're, yeah, they're not really. Come on. Their typical tweets are like, I'm not giving you my Twitter handle. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, I respect Hello, it. Hello, everyone named Tyler. Yeah. You can't have yeah. my handle. That's exactly right. Okay. Um, yeah. My last question is, what does it mean for you to go after the life you want? Uh, what does it mean to me? It's very liberating. It's very liberating. It's uh, like, and it's funny, I get the question a lot of, what's this all going to be for you? What's this all going to turn into? What's your motive? And the more like I think about it, I, you know, I don't do, I don't love like the five year plan or like, where am I going to be in five years? Because if that was the case, I would have never said sitting in here talking to you, like after working here for five years, I didn't even know who he is. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I just like to be opportunistic and curious and, that's a pretty fun way to live life. And that's like how I try to think about every day is like, if there's an opportunity, go for it and be curious, which leads to you having an open mind, meeting a lot of people, not judging others, seeing things from different perspective and we'll put you in a lot of neat situations. So liberating. Yeah. Thanks for being on Tyler. Thank you so much for having me. All right, let's catch a few details here. First, business is number one versus quote unquote Gary V. What does this mean? Well, Gary V is a persona that Gary Vaynerchuk obviously puts out on the internet to promote what he does, whether he's selling a shoe or services. That is Gary V talking, but that is not all of his work. Business comes first, clients come first, and meeting somebody that's a huge fan is very important to them, but not as important as doing the work and actually getting clients the work that they have paid for. But all of these things need to be balanced on the calendar. You still need to promote yourself in order to get that work. So making sure that balance is there is super important. It's harder to do the work than to promote potential work, but all of it is work you have to do. Live by your calendar. Live by your calendar. I have been telling you this for a very long time, but Gary has to do it because he's got a five-minute meeting, then a five-minute meeting, then a five-minute meeting, then maybe a 15-minute call, then an hour meeting with a client, then a five-minute meeting, then a five-minute meeting. And that's meeting with staff, meeting with fans, meeting with clients, meeting with pretty much anyone, investors, just you name it. So there's a lot of different modes to be in. There's a lot of things to do. Maybe he's promoting a book or a product. Think about living by your calendar so that you can keep track of all the things you have to do, but also what can you do to batch so that you're in the same mode for a continued period of time and that momentum stays up? If you're in promotional mode, if you're in client mode, if you're in some other mode, how can you batch that? We talked about batching a lot recently on youtube.com slash amytv, so definitely check that out. But they could also be seasons of scheduling. Sometimes Gary's online and promoting something for three months for uh, every single day for three months, and then there will be three months where he He's not on quite as much because he's focusing a lot more on different things that have to do with 
inside the business, things that we wouldn't be able to see public facing. So this may or may not be good for you. I know that I definitely had a season of life when I was promoting the book and everything that had to do with the promotion of the book was compacted into a couple months of time or actually a lot more because we were back scheduling podcast interviews and things like that. So how can you batch? How can you schedule seasons of time and really be the most effective because you have the momentum of being in that mode for a period of time? And what about sacrifice? Sacrificing for your dream job. Tyler had to do a lot of that when he decided, yeah, I'm going to work for Gary. And Gary wanted a minimum three-year commitment of you are going to do what I say you're going to do and you're going to be on for me and you're going to get my text messages late at night, early in the morning. And that was a big change up in his life. Are you ready for that? Are you ready for a change up in your life in order to get the change you want? Some people don't think about that, right? We just want the big change we want and we don't want to sacrifice the changes it's going to take to get there. It's all change. It all contributes to the cause. So how do you need to sacrifice where you haven't yet that would get you further in the game? Everything we talked about, again, will be at the show notes, detailspodcast.com. What an amazing episode. If you nerd out about scheduling like me and effectiveness like me, being able to peel back the curtain and talk to somebody that really knows what it takes to run someone's life who is just operating at the most ridiculous level, you will have nerded out with me today. You know, I'm also wondering if you would like to get some more advice straight to those earbuds of yours. If you'd like some simple steps for living your very best life every day, I want to send you a free audio training with these seven essential details for going after the life that you want. To receive this audiogram, subscribe to the podcast, take a screenshot, and show me you're subscribed. I want to see that e- screenshot. Send it in an email. Hello at detailspodcast.com with audiogram, please, in the subject line, and we'll get that right over to you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it as always. If you'd like to discover more excellence in going after the life that you want, head over to Amy TV by typing in your browser, youtube.com slash Amy TV, or search for Amy Landino in the YouTube app. Subscribe for good vibes, kiss the ones you love, and remember, go after the life that you want. Cheers. Cheers.